Hi everybody, welcome to another Howard's Coin Finds, Howard here, and this is the results from Willie's Milk Bar Coins that I got on Friday, $190 worth. I did the shorts, just a quick one, just to show the coins in the bags that I got. So um, it was $100 of twos, $50 of ones, uh, $10 of 50 cents, and $30 of 20 cent pieces. So um, I kept 13 coins out of that for a total of $4.80 which isn't too bad. Um, so to start with, I'll just show you the coins that were in the coin return. Well, actually, the Combank takes them out. Sometimes they take them out. And they put them on top of the machine. And every time I go there, whatever's there, I just take it. So there was a couple of 20 cent pieces, but I put them in, cashed them in. I checked them first. Um, and these were all American and English or Euro coins. So you got the uh, couple of one cents, got a dime, um, yep, nickel. And this we got quarter, quarter dollar. So these coins are what they call coin orientated, you turn them that way. Our coins are called metal, metal orientated and you turn them left to right. So yes, yeah, so uh, none of them are silver. Uh, and then there was one Chinese coin in there. Oh no, it's Indonesian, sorry, it's a thousand rupee. I've got these, they used to be notes, but now they're coins. 2010, so it's not bad. Another quarter. And then a couple of euros, so one euro. Not much way, sorry. Spania, not Spain. Another one. I'm not sure what country that one's for. I'd have to look them up. Could be Germany or somewhere, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. And uh, a 50 cent euro. Very nice too. 2012. Again, not sure the country, but the, I don't know, it could be Romania, Lithuania, I don't know. Uh, but uh, they're very nice, but they're real heavy, you know. If you had a pocket full of these Euros, you wouldn't be too happy. Because they're very weighty. Anyway, that was alright, just to show you uh, some of the coins I got. I got two bags for the last months that I've been going over and taking uh, the coins from Willie's Milk Bar. But I haven't got them out. I'll do a video one time. I'll show you all of them that I've got. Uh, quite a few nice ones too. So back to the coins. And um, I'm just going to get out my pointer that I made. Got a couple in there. I made that one, not that one. So uh, bang, bang, bang. Anyway, we'll get up a bit closer and I'll show you the coins that we got. Okay, that's them up closer, and um, we'll start off with the first one, and that's 2003. 2003, Century of Women's Suffrage, and this was 10 million, but there's a variety of a variety. <laughs> they made two of these. This one is the large design. If you look down the bottom, there's hardly any gap there, and just at that prong there, there's no tip on it. It's wider. She's actually wider across here than on the other variety, which is the small design. And the gap down the bottom is bigger. And it's easy to tell because that gap in between the two ladies is the same down here on the small design. And just here, you'll have a bit of prong, about a mil's worth. And so there's a pair of them. And they're a variety of a variety because the mint doesn't know which one it did first. If it did the large design or the small design. So they're varieties of each other. That's the only ones that came out that year. And so five million of each. But I'm pretty sure the large I've been finding more of than the small. Uh, and I just happen to have a couple I've been keeping. So I'm selling them in pairs on eBay. 
when I can find a pair. And that top one is the small design. So the gap here equals that gap. And there's a little bit of prong on there. So I'll put them both together. So that's the one from Woody's. That's the, the large design. And that's the one I already had, and that's the small design. And you can see there's a bit of prong there. Nothing on that one. And so look for them. Try and get them in good condition, but they're not easy to come by and get them in pairs all the time. You mostly find in large ones. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that's those. Look for, for them. And then I kept this one because it was nice. 2014 Anzac, they made five of these. 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18. These were 22 million. The uh, 2015 were the lowest at 1.4 million. The 2016 were 2.1. The 2017 were 1.9 million. And the 2018 were 2 million. So you know, 2015 to 18, extremely low. Anyway, I kept that because it's nice. See if I can get a set of them. Harder to find these days. Uh, and then a couple of 50 cents. This is really not in good nick at all. But they are the lowest year under the 85, the 73, at 4 million. So uh, you want to be keeping them. I used to have heaps of these. I used to find them in really good nick. Oh, anyway, we're talking decades ago, of course early 2000s, I was picking them up, anything from 69 through the 76, uh, including the cook. The 77s, you always find nice ones, but uh, the coat of arms, but including the cook, the 70, now you find that I always find them in almost uncirculated condition, beautiful, 69s right through the 76. Now, this is what I'm coming up with. But if you need one, they're out there. 73 at 4 million so very low and then 97 which is 4.3 million and I keep them basically because they're getting harder to come by 4.3 it's not too bad Nick so uh, two of the lowest mints part of the lowest mint 50 cents is uh, then we got a 95 United Nations, nice. I think these are uh, four and a half million, but you know, somewhere there, four point six, four seven. Nice. Don't come across them too often either. And then one of the ones, one of my favourite coins. I love it so much. Working, it's really good. So two thousand and three volunteers. And they're uh, seven and a half million, I think, if I remember. And look for these with a nice die crack running off her neck right through. I had one. Uh, it was almost uncirculated a long time ago. I saw, it's all sold on eBay. Most of these I find, I put them on eBay and I can get around it. Um, but uh, yeah, you can get a nice die crack on there. And I'd say the now, <laughs> rare because I've only ever found one but that's a cool coin really nice um, and then the last three is the 1981 mints that minted the 81 coin so what we have here is the Canberra oh, sorry no that one's the Welsh I put them in the Welsh Canberra and Canada mints so just by chance I've got all three to show you. I don't normally, I, I, these I do worry about looking if they're in good nick, you know? But uh, these are the 81s is what I've been looking for. So I've got three there. I've got two Canberra and two Welsh. And I'll show you up closer now, the differences between them all. Okay, got them nice and close. So we have the Welsh. Canberra and the Canadian. So the Welsh and the Canberra, both of these used high pressure when they minted the coin 
and the queen sits down on these like in a bowl so they're well incused if you want to put put it that way push down and the canadian is flat the queen sits on top the field here is flat they use less pressure and i can pick these up without even turning them over as soon as you know what to look for here they just stand out immediately immediately uh, because they're flat they're just dead flat with a queen these that push down they're concaved so she's actually down in there might be hard to sort of pick it up but if you've got them in hand you're going to see it straight away and this one the queen sits on top it's dead flat that's a bit dirty to show you isn't it so she sits flat and she sits down and so you can pick them up immediately just by that just by that alone so every single one i've ever gone come across i can pick up from the top well now and for a long time there but you will and anyway so we'll get down to it so this one's got a concave planchet so it's pushed down the welsh and the canberra and the canadian is flat the lettering on here is flat based letters the lettering on the canberra is also flat based so the welsh and the canberra these dies are nearly exactly the same because there is a slight difference but i don't worry about it is that these letters are flat and these letters are rounded but i don't worry about that because i'll show you the reason why there's another one to look at and if you can see them it's immediate you don't need to worry about that lettering it'll be there the same is the canadian it's flat planchet queen sits on top but the light the letters at the base are fishtailed or scallop based or curve based letters and so i'll show them up a little bit closer so i'll pick up the welsh one zoom up a bit and the letters at the bottom are flat they're flat based there's no scallop in them same as the numbers so they're flat based and those letters are flat then we have the Canberra and its letters are also flat base and the date they're all flat based but the lettering is rounded you can see it and then the Canadian is scallop based on the I the T, the H's, the ones, that little nick in the bottom, you can see it there. It's like a bone on the side, not every letter, only the I's, the ones, the T's, these ones here. They're worn so it's hard to see, but you'll find at least one letter, even if it's worn. The T there. And the eye, the good one. The eye is always good. Usually these eyes here are pretty good too. And the T to look at. So they're curve base. So they so like I said, they're curve base. So flat base letters, flat base letters, curve base letters. Flat letters, round letters. And I think these are flat letters, but that doesn't matter. So um, concave planchet, concave flat planchet, flat based lettering, flat based lettering, curve based lettering. That's the front of them. So Welsh, Canberra, and Canada. So those letters are tellable, but it can be iffy when they wear 
Now, you might not be certain yourself, but I'll turn them over now and show you the conclusive part to it. And whatever I tell you on the front there, every single time you turn it over, it will be exactly the coin that it's supposed to be. So if it's flat base letters and flat letters, flat base letters and round letters, when you turn them over, the next one to look at is the nostrils on these two. Because the Welsh has the small nostrils. The Canberra has large nostrils. And the Canadian also has the large nostrils. But that's a dead giveaway from these based on just the front with the flat planchet curved base letters. Every time you turn it over, there'll be a half claw sitting on that first one. But we'll get to that. So this one here being the Welsh and the Canberra, the absolute dead set knowing what you got is by the nostrils. And in this case, the Welsh are the only one of the three that have small nostrils. Okay, I've had to play around, but uh, the one you're seeing here is the Welsh one. As I said, it's got the small nostrils, and it's the only one of the three that have the small nostrils. I can't get my camera any closer. Um, is, no, I think it's this one. I'll change it over. I think, yeah, this one you can see better. So you can see the nostrils. They're very small. And they just look like sort of teardrops, I suppose, on the side and flicked out. And a big space between. So that's Welsh. Small nostrils equals Welsh. But you can't tell the letters on the other side, which I wouldn't worry about until you find this. It's Welsh. And then the Canberra one is the big ones. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's better. So you can see that. So you can see there the big nostrils. Sorry if it's not really focused in. I think it's the light in the, in the room here. But that's the big nostrils. Uh, I've put it like this because I can get the light angled better. It's a little bit further away, but it is in focus. Well, that might be better. But um, they're the large nostrils. They're just like big dots pushed in. And they're the small nostrils. Big space, little flicked out. So these aren't, these aren't very good, I've got to say, because they're, they're worn. The big nostrils are showing up good, big hole there. But once they wear over, it's hard to tell which is which. They can wear right down to a little dot and you think it's these. So you need to get something that's, um, you know, not so worn. But I just happen to have those ones that, and then with the 1981, curved base letters, flat planchet, turn it over, and every time that first claw will be in half. And it'll have, there you go, the large nostrils. That's my camera shaking like crazy there. It's only just holding on. Uh, so that's your half claw. There. Very first one. And that's a privy mark. Because you can't put mint marks on coins that are in circulation, not even Canberra. But you're allowed to put privy marks, which is the old pirate way of putting hidden messages on coins. And that's a hidden message saying, I was minted in Canada. And also, those curved base letters, to me, is another privy mark, because the other ones haven't got it. And then again, he's saying, hey, we were made in Canada. So to me, there's two privy marks. That's those curved base letters and that half claw, which is actually about three-fifths, a bit longer than half. So there you go. So that's the three of them. 
So I'll run over them again. So I'll run over them again, we got the Welsh. That's flat base leathers. Concave plancher, pushed down. We got the Canberra. Flat base leathers, rounded leathering with concave planchet. That's flat base leathers and flat leathers as well on that Welsh. And then the Canadian is curved base leathers or scallop or fishtail and and a flat planchet from less pressure. So high pressures, less pressure. And uh, turn it over. And with the Welsh, you'll get small nostrils on the platypus. With the Canberra, you'll get large nostrils on the platypus. And with the Canadian, you'll get large nostrils on the platypus. And that first claw is in half. Okay, so that's a wrap up. So 13 coins for $4.80 from $190 worth of checks. And um, yeah, hope it helped a few people with recognising these 381 20 cent pieces. And yeah, so real good. Till next time, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.